Anyway, welcome to the main set, Club and Bar Town Board meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Teresa, do you want to call the roll? Councilwoman Flood, here. Councilwoman Standard is delayed out of town, so she won't be here this evening. Councilmember Rally, here. Councilwoman Wallowa, here. Supervisor Barrett, here. Uh, we don't have any board minutes to consider this evening. Um, first thing I need to do is. Um, this is a, uh, an announcement that uh, we place on the town website and we're also um, supposed to announce it at a public meeting. So I'm just going to read this, uh, this brief announcement here. <clears throat> it's related to uh, stormwater. Please be advised that the town of Clifton Park is, he is hereby gives public notification, is hereby gives, doesn't sound right. Please be advised that the town of Clifton Park hereby gives public notification that the town of Clifton Park draft annual report as required by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Speedy's general permit for stormwater discharges from municipal separate storm sewer system operators is now available for public review and comment. You can find a copy of the report at cliftonpark.org and or town hall during regular, regular business hours and or by mailing a request for a copy to Scott Reese. And Scott Reese is our uh, stormwater guru. His uh, email is s-r-e-e-s-e -E -E at cliftonpark.org. S-R-E-E-S-E -E -E at cliftonpark.org. All questions or comments should also be directed to Scott Reese. Uh, his phone number, in addition to the email, is 518-371-6054. Uh, his address is the same address here at Town Hall, One Town Hall Plaza, Clifton Park, 12065. So that's uh, an announcement regarding the um, uh, annual report uh, about stormwater. Um, the uh, Ashdown Road uh, Bridge Project uh, began today in earnest, and Ashdown Road is closed to local traffic only. Uh, it's a Saratoga County project, uh, and it will be uh, taking place throughout the summer uh, with the goal of them completing the project by the time school begins next next uh, calendar, well, next school year. Uh, so hopefully that uh, they meet that timeline or perhaps uh, finish earlier than that. Or earlier the better, and that's something that um, uh, we've emphasized on uh, multiple occasions. So it's a uh, uh, definitely uh, an inconvenience, particularly for the folks who live on Ashdown Road and those that travel Ashdown Road on a regular basis. But... Um, all uh, applicable organizations and community entities uh, have been notified by the county um, and well ahead of time. We've had public meetings about the project. Uh, we had a public meeting back in uh, 19, thinking the project was going to take place in 2020, uh, but it was delayed to this year. So they've, uh, they've just started the project uh, today. Uh, so uh, so just keep that in mind. There are signs on either end of Ashdown Road that say road close to local traffic. Only there was signage uh, prior to today uh, that the project would be starting today and that the road would be closed. So, uh, so we understand there will be an inconvenience, but uh, based on the inspections and uh, condition of the bridge, necessitated a replacement and obviously we would trade uh, the safety of motorists uh, for uh, a little bit of inconvenience um, at this point so um, so that uh, that is moving forward the other uh, project uh, that's actually a county project that we've been 
Following closely is uh, the uh, uh, new traffic light at Bishop Ferry and Grooms Road. I'm giving updates on, on that project as well. Uh, that will be going out to bid on Friday with a return date of uh, June 1st. Uh, so that project will, com will be completed uh, later this year as well. So those are two important county projects that will be done uh, this year. Obviously, we had a couple of uh, important projects, uh, county projects that were completed last year as well. So it's good to, to have uh, these improvements in our town when the county is responsible. I've been in contact with uh, the OT uh, multiple occasions about 146A. Uh, we, there, there remains a, um, a guardrail that was damaged by a tree that came down during the winter, and it's, it's still in disrepair. In addition to that, I've been wanting to, uh, to get 146A paid uh, from, well, I've even told them basically from the, the overpass near Main Street uh, up to the new roundabout would, uh, would be appreciated. Um, so uh, nothing, no, no commitments there yet, uh, but um, uh, they, they've done some patching on that stretch in the last few years, but obviously it, it needs to be paved, and we're hoping that occurs in the near future. So we'll uh, we'll continue to uh, lobby for uh, the state to do that work. Um, all right. Uh, any other uh, communications or announcements at this time? All right. All right. We have our town historian with us this evening. Hi, John. How are you? I'm good. Good. He has his uh, annual report and a couple of and I'm events happy, coming up. I'm, I'm happy to take this mask off because <laughs> it steams up my glasses. <laughs> you know, people tell me I'm full of hot air, and I guess I am. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Nobody <laughs> says that around here, John. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, uh, for the first time in over 40 years, uh, last year, I was not able to come to a town board meeting and give this report, uh, which I usually give uh, around April 1st, which is the anniversary of the, of the town being formed in 1828. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be here tonight in person, and it looks like things are looking up. Uh, so this is the report for 2020. Uh, which I'm required to give to you folks, and then I give a copy to the state historian and also to the county historian. Uh, due to the uh, pandemic shutdown in March of 2020, all planned public events were canceled. This included escorted trips to the Erie Canal exhibit at the New York State Museum, a Hamilton tour at Schuyler Mansion, a special archaeological exhibit at the Historic Rooms Tavern with a series of guest speakers, and a number of walking tours and lectures. Uh, the shutdown ushered in months of quiet time uh, that enabled me to concentrate on research and writing and ultimately led to the new publication of more bits of Clifton Park history that became available in October. Because there uh, there were no time constraints. I was able to learn the whole process of putting the book together, inserting photographs, captions, and designing the layout. It was a uh, <laughs> trial and error, let me tell you. Uh, but it was fun. I had something to do. <laughs> uh, I used uh, my earlier 2003 publication, Bits of Clifton Park History, as a model. Uh, the new book features oral histories and interesting stories about landmarks, artifacts, and former residents of our town. Uh, I was also able to research and write a couple articles relating to the American Revolution and life on the Erie Canal, which have been accepted for publication this year in New York History, which should be out in the fall edition. Uh, New, York, New York History and... Uh, and the Archives Magazine. That article should be out this summer on the Erie Canal. Other articles 
were written for the Community News, Clifton Park Neighbors, and for the Saratoga County History Roundtable, which published weekly articles online during the pandemic, uh, pandemic shutdown. One of my articles, was, uh, which was published in, in June online, uh, was on the construction of the Colony Reservoir. And it was published on the Roundtable site, as I mentioned in June. And this may actually have prompted the town of Colony uh, uh, to examine their ownership of the reservoir and again offer it for sale. I mean, the timing was uncanny. I, and then I got a call from, from Colony. They wanted to use the article and post it on, on their site when they offered the reservoir for sale. So uh, I think that was an interesting coincidence. Uh, an article on slavery in Clifton Park was published during the Black Lives Matter demonstrations in the Gristmill, a publication of the Saratoga County Historical Society, and it prompted considerable discussion on various uh, websites. Somebody thought that I was just throwing uh, Kindle or wood on the fire, and uh, a lot of people didn't realize that we had slaves right here in Clifton Park up until 1827. So it was an eye opener, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, <clears throat> because before the March shutdown, I was able to give several in-person PowerPoint presentations. A talk on discovering antiques was presented to the Southern Saratoga County Women's Club in Rexford. From Farms to Suburbs, Clifton Park Develops was presented at the Clifton Park Senior Center. Historical decorated stoneware was presented to the annual meeting of the Schenectady County Historical Society and dredging up the past experiences in discovering Clifton Park history was presented at the Clifton Park Half Moon Library. And the library has now recorded a number of my presentations on Clifton Park history and they are available uh, from the library's website, which is sort of interesting. So I, if somebody misses a talk, I just tell them to go on the library's website and they can pick that up. We could probably even link to that from the town's website. Uh, <clears throat> Clifton Park's Historic Preservation Commission and uh, the Historic Easement Program has become a model with other nearby towns. During 2020, I met with representatives from the town of Niskayuna in Schenectady County and Bethlehem in Albany County to discuss and answer questions regarding our preservation program. I've actually put together a PowerPoint program on Clifton Park's preservation program because I seem to be going all over the place talking about it. Uh, as I mentioned last year, it was Malta, uh, Wilton, uh, a lot of other places. So it's making it's making its way. Uh, I also participated on a Zoom panel discussion with two other Saratoga County preservationists uh, held by the Saratoga County Historical Society. Now, one of these people was a legislator. I can't remember her name uh, from Saratoga. I think she's a member of the assembly or something. You probably know her name. Uh, it was held by the Saratoga County Historical Society, and they're trying to reframe themselves at the Saratoga County History Center now. Uh, uh, it was discussing historic preservation in Saratoga County. I spoke on Clifton Park's preservation program and fielded questions from the public watching on Zoom. Also in conjunction with the Saratoga County History Center, I have provided historical photographs and information on early general stores in Clifton Park for inclusion in a special exhibit on general stores in Saratoga County to open in June of 2021. So that's coming up next month. That'll be interesting. Uh, the Preservation Commission managed to place several other homes on our town register of historic places. I continue to work with the commission to provide histories of these homes and to assist in placing historic markers. This year, we added two uh, new markers indicating the sites of the Garnsey Cemetery on Route 146, Rexford, and the Jones Cemetery on Waite Road. The, rest, the restoration of the Milius Cemetery at Clifton Park Center Road was a major project of the commission this year. And of course, Matt's daughter was very involved with that. Um, 
I also want to add that these historic markers uh, uh, will eventually be going up on the town's website. I fed that information to a member of the Preservation Commission, Paul, who has quite a knowledge of computers and is really doing a, a bang up job on, on putting together a great website for the Historic Preservation Commission. So uh, people will have access to the location and, the, and all the texts on those historic markers, which by the way, we have 42 markers throughout town, historic markers, which I think is more than any other town in Saratoga County. <clears throat> I have become quite adept at Zoom meetings, uh, at first being a little timid about going into this, not know knowing so much, and I'm not a whiz at technology, but by Jove, I know pretty well now. I've got Zoom meetings practically every day of the week. This week in particular, I have, and one day I had three Zoom meetings in one day. So I've really learned the technology, and, and actually this Saturday I'm hosting, so I'm host for the first time. Uh, the Association of Public Historians of New York State, of which I'm a board member, had a very successful conference via Zoom featuring experts from various locations. With a Zoom meeting, I mean, you can call in experts from all over the United States and even foreign countries. I know my recorder group meets on Zoom and we've had people uh, run it from, from places like Scotland and Great Britain. Um, I also began doing programs via Zoom. A PowerPoint presentation on Rexford's Little Coney Island was given to a Clifton Park group known as The Village, older residents in town committed to remaining in their own homes. A new PowerPoint presentation through the stereoscope, Time Machine to the 19th Century was organized and presented via Zoom for the Clifton Park Half Moon Library and a special exhibit on this subject at the library during October and December coincided with the presentation. Uh, due to the shutdown, people seem to have more time on their hands to explore their family genealogy and local history. I answered many emails uh, and phone calls on these subjects. Uh, a number of questions were concerned with sites in the Bishopbury Nature and Historic Preserve. Uh, which you well know has really picked up in, in, in business lately. Um, and so in return, uh, I, we, put, we put the, uh, the guide to the Bishop Ray Nature and Historic Preserve up on the town's website online so that I could refer people to that. Uh, one remarkable town achievement this year, of course, was the completion and opening of the bridge over the canal at Clutes Dry Dock on the site of the original Farmer's Bridge. This connects the 1825 and 1842 towpaths. This was a project that was conceived back in the late 1970s and early 80s. In fact, it was in the original um, long range plan, master plan for the Bishop Ferry Nature and Historic Preserve. So it's nice to see after 40 some years, finally this project gets completed. Major uh, achievement for the town. I continue to serve as representative to the Mohawk Towpath Byway and advisor to the Friends of the Historic Rooms Tavern. Both groups continue to meet via Zoom. Considering the year long shutdown due to the pandemic and lack of personal contact with the public, 2020 seems to be a fairly good year for Clifton Park history. And as always, I thank the town board for their continued support and all those in the Parks and Recreation Office and many other town employees whose efforts make these things possible. And I especially uh, want to uh, welcome Amy Flood uh, on board, uh, who is our liaison with Historic Preservation and with the Friends of Groom's Tavern, and I've worked with her. And uh, uh, one of the things was my, my book had just come out, and and we were talking, Amy and I, and I, I mentioned the fact that I wondered if the school libraries had copies of my books because they, they cover local history, you know. And uh, lo, lo and behold, she, she checked for me and we actually went to the school and uh, talked to the librarians there and, and, and gave each of the schools at Shenandoah 
copies of my book, so they have no excuse now. And, and, and not only As a teacher, it should be a requirement, John. Yeah, that's right. Why are you reading? And she's, getting, reading and she's getting me into the schools. I have several school programs that I do, and we're letting them know that this is available. So I really appreciate her efforts. And I've indoctrinated both Amy and Tony on the town's historic buildings, the Groom's Tavern and the Grange Hall. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're set to go. And uh, I thank you all for another great year. Thank Very thank good. Well, thank you, John. Thank you for all oh, We have a couple of bids up, too. Can we get those back yet? June. What's that? Uh, we got another three weeks till they open. Oh, OK, good. They are out. All right. We'll have that information soon. You know, John, I was thinking, um, you know, 200 years is coming up. It is. Yeah, so that's a, kind of a big deal, right? As a matter of fact, I was thinking that um, maybe we can, uh, you know, it's a little early, I'd say, but maybe it would be time to uh, start a, a committee on a small scale. And uh, I, think, I, I think that's a good idea because, you know, like in, in uh, 2025, we can sort of kick off the celebration because that's the anniversary of the opening of the Erie Canal, right. which is a big thing for us, and work our way into uh, 18, 19, yeah, 2028, <laughs> I think in the past, too. Uh, and, and while I'm up here, I just want to plug a couple of my events I have coming up yeah, please because do. we can do outside things. And so I have a couple outside things. I'm doing a walking tour of the Fisher Ferry Historic District this Saturday at 10 o'clock. We're meeting at the firehouse. People can park there and we'll do a walking tour. I'm doing an outdoor event at the Historic Grooms Tavern. Uh, I don't remember when it was. I think it's uh, May, end of May sometime. I have it upstairs. Yeah. yeah. It's on yeah. my calendar. Is it it's the, on my calendar too. Is it the 15th? Try not to look at because it makes me go crazy. Might be the 15th. I, think, I think you're right, yeah, I think Phil. It's the 15th, I think it's, I think it's it Saturday, day. Sunday. It's a Sunday. It's at 2 o'clock. Oh, maybe it's 16th then. 16th. Yeah, Sunday at 2 yeah, o'clock. It's Groom's Tavern. So people can ask the historian whatever questions they want and I'll make up whatever answers. Uh -oh. <laughs> anyway. Are you going to be in uh, Are you gonna be in costume? <laughs> well, uh, it depends oh, on the Or should I say in character? <laughs> yeah, it could be. I could be, yeah. I think you I, should. I, can I, I like your uh, cling deal. Yeah. Excuse uh, me? I like your cling deal character. Yes, I have one for him, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah with a little straw hat. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So, and then I'm doing a, a walk uh, on the canal in June. I think it's the second weekend in June. That's a Saturday at 10 o'clock meeting at the Whipple Trust yeah. Bridge. Is it the 12th? Yeah. Thank you, Myla. <laughs> and, and, uh, we're going to do a different tour of the canal this time. We're going to go down to the uh, the early settlement of, of Forts Ferry, the town's first settlement, and on to Clute's Dry Dock along the 1842 towpath. Mm -hmm. We're going to cross over the new bridge and come right. back on the 1825 towpath. So nice. Kind of interesting. Nice. John, where are all these events listed for anyone in the public or new board members? Excuse me? Where are all these events that you where? spoke of listed? Is there We're going to try to get listed on the town website under the historical maybe preservation session or there maybe okay. somewhere. And I'm signed up to do something in September, first Friday in September. And that okay. we're going back inside for that. Right. I have I put together a, a PowerPoint presentation on the new book. So oh, good. I'll, good. I'll use that to promote it. We're going to post on Facebook as well. Okay. And the community news always gets good results. Oh, okay. So, well, um, yeah, so maybe we should uh, start that. Uh, like I said, it's a little early. But hey, time flies, right, John? I mean, history yeah, is right. history is made every day. I'm going to suspect that it's going to probably be the same people involved in the Historic Preservation Commission. And that's probably a safe bet. Yep. Make up this thing that, that we should get started. I remember, <laughs> I've been around for so long, uh, <laughs> I, I remember the bicentennial celebration because I was the co-chair for that for Clifton Park. And we started getting ready, ready for that, at least in, uh, it was 1973, three years early. In fact, we published Crossroads and Canals, which was a bicentennial project right. in 1975. 
that's when we got, we also got a grant to do historical markers. We planted 12 of them at that time. They were only $100 a piece. Wow. And they were made of cast iron. Do you know what they cost today? Wow. <laughs> Holy mackerel. About $1,100 a piece. And they're made of aluminum cast iron. Mm. Anyway. I'm becoming, Things have changed. I'm becoming part of history. <laughs> People will be interviewing me. Well, there was a, uh, well, speaking of interviews, there was a, a great uh, interview recently in the Saratoga magazine. Yes, I thought the article was going to be about the slide out. I didn't know it was going to be about me. Yes, no, well, yeah. Well, well, Bill Buell is another historian, you see. He's a certain, he's a connected accountant historian, so he has an affinity for this stuff. Yeah, so that was a good story. And, uh, good, uh, good overview of John and the work that he does, and uh, a couple of nice pictures. Yeah. So it was good. Uh, all right, good. So why don't we... Um, yeah, why don't we uh, start putting that together? I guess it's uh, several years out, but we can start the planning on a smaller scale and eventually ramp up as uh, as we get down the road a little bit. We could actually plan some events leading up to it, you know, to get people get the excitement going. Yeah, I think uh, you know certainly Bishop Ferry area would be a uh, a place of emphasis. Because there's so much history involving the beginnings of the town and the Erie Canal and so on and so forth, so and you know certainly what? want to tie them uh, in. Absolutely, we used to have we started canal days. We used to have canal days in Bishop Ferry, so uh, starting in 1973 was the first one. Our last one was in 1985 mm. because. Uh, People who did all the work decided they didn't want to do all the work. But I think the town also sponsored that with the Fisher Ferry Civic Association. And now other people do it. Schenectady be has one. And, uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention is that we also had the, the uh, uh, celebration for the American Revolution coming up. I think it's, it's at the Sesquicentennial, Centennial, 250 years, which, oh, would, right. which would be, it's at the 2020. I think that would be so. You know, we can fold that into the mix to it. Okay. Maybe, you know, like five years of celebration. Yeah, we can put the brainstorm on some basic plans, mm -hmm. uh, set some priorities, and then as time moves forward, dig more into the details. Yep. And, uh, okay. Sounds good. Good. Thank All you. right. Well, thank you, John. Any questions for John at this time? No, we're lucky to have John. Yeah. Lucky in town. And he has been around a while. <laughs> 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 That's what we love. <laughs> you are right again, John. <laughs> well, after all, you know, James Groom was born back in 1790, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Way before the town was, yeah. uh, was a thing. Yeah. I would just echo what a supervisor and councilman flood said. Thank you for all you for this report for what you're doing. This is really part of what sets us apart as a town is this history and keeping it relevant in front of all of us and of all the residents and now especially um, our students. I think it's really critical. So yes, and I'm really interested in getting the younger people involved. And I think Amy's going to help me do that. Uh, we have we have a youngster. Matt's daughter is now uh, on the preservation commission as a you know, youth liaison, so that's, that's good. And it's important to bring these people in because we want our work to continue. Absolutely. Well, chronicling history is one thing. Keeping it alive is another. Sure. And, and that's and that's really what we want to continue to do, and you're a big part of that. So uh, we can, you know, coming up on 200 years, there's a lot of different events and yes. things that we can a do. Lot, a lot to leading up to that. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Checks in the mail. <laughs> All right. Teresa, if you could read through the uh, resolutions, please. A resolution establishing an outside user fee for the Boston Lake Water District and authorize the supervisor to sign an outside user agreement for the Boston Lake Water District for property located at 1098 Boston Lake Road. Whereas by resolution number 165 of 2012, the town board established the Boston 
Lake Water District pursuant to a map plan and report performed by McDonald Engineering. And whereas the town board as commissioners of the Boston Lake Water District has received a request to extend service to land owned by Anthony LaRosa at 10898 Boston Lake Road, Boston Lake Moore, particularly identified as SDL 263-2-7. And whereas the real property is located outside the current service district or area of the district, and whereas the Boston Park Water Authority has determined that sufficient capacity exists within the Boston Lake Water District to provide service to the property, and whereas the town board recognizes the environmental health and safety benefits associated with public water service over alternate means of water supply and wishes to establish user fees to provide for the extension of service to properties outside the original district boundaries. Now therefore be a result of the town board as commissioners of the Boston Lake Water District hereby establishes the outside user fee for the district as a one-time fee of $1,000 to be paid against the outstanding bonded indebtedness for the district and be a further resolved of the town board as commissioners of the Boston Lake Water District hereby approves an outside user connection to the district's facilities for property located at 1098 Boston Lake Road, New York and be a further result of the outside user agreement shall be assigned to the property at 1098 Boston Lake Road, Boston Lake and connected to the Boston Lake Water District facilities the agreement to run with the land. A resolution to retain prime AE Group of New York for professional engineering services related to the Riverview Landing sewer and district improvements. Whereas the town board, as commissioners of the Riverview Landing sewer district, wishes to retain professional services associated with the design of a sanitary sewer conveyance system from the Riverview Landing sewer district low pressure system to the Saratoga County sewer district via the window requires subdivision, whereas the scope of the project may ultimately be designed for the decommissioning of the Riverview Landing Sewer District, and whereas Supervisor Barrett wishes to apply for funding to the Clean Water State Revolving Fund and Water Quality Improvement Projects Program, and whereas the area also includes the Mohawk River Golf Course and its wastewater treatment plant, and inclusion of the Mohawk River Golf Course wastewater treatment plant will increase the town score in its application for funding. And whereas Prime AE, formerly known as the Ronald Engineering, has decades of experience with the Riverview Landing Sewer District and Wastewater Treatment Plant and the Mohawk River Golf Course water Wastewater Treatment Plant. And whereas Prime AE Group of New York proposes to prepare revisions to the existing engineering report and secret documents for the Riverview Land Riverview Landing Sewer District project for an amount not to exceed $9,000. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Supervisor Barrett recommends that the quote from Prime AE Group be accepted and be it further resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign an agreement with Prime AE Group of New York for professional consulting for a documents related to the Riverview Standing uh, Landing Sewer District Improvement Project an amount not to exceed $9,000 to be paid from unreserved fund balance. A resolution in connection with the Town of Clifton Park accepting lean stat agency status pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEPR, Regulation 6 NYCRR, Part 617. Whereas the Town of Clifton Park has determined that a need exists for, to perform proposed upgrades to the existing sanitary sewer system, and whereas the Town of Clifton Park is in the planning stages to install pump stations and sewer force main to connect the existing Riverview Landing sewer district and Mohawk River Country Club sanitary system to the Saratoga County Sewer District. And whereas the Town of Clifton Park will apply for funding opportunities from various agencies for this project. And whereas the Town Board wishes to declare lead agency status for the project and to initiate environmental review in compliance with the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Now therefore be installed with the Town Board of the Town of Clifton Park hereby accepts lead agency status pursuant to CEPR regulations and authorizes Pride AE Group of New York to complete the coordinated review of this project and other matters related to CEPA. Res a resolution accepting a quote from Dolan Excavating for the repair and replacement of a manhole on South Loop Drive, whereas quotes are received for the repair of a manhole cover that has been compromised and needs replacement prior to the summer's paving project, and whereas stolen trucking and excavation 208 East 
High Street Boston Spa submitted the lowest responsive quote in the amount of $8,500 for the replacement work. And whereas Michael O'Brien, Collection Systems Manager, has reviewed the quote and recommends accepting the quote, which was submitted by Poland Trucking and Excavation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board accepts the quote of Poland Trucking and Excavation for the replacement and installation of the manhole on Southwood Drive for an amount not to exceed $8,500 to be paid to Clifton Park Sewer District Number 1 Sewer Contractual Equipment. A resolution accepting a quote from Iroqua Water Technologies for upgrading the existing bioxide system in the Clifton Park Sewer District Number 1, whereas bioxide is used to treat wastewater in the Clifton Park Sewer District Number 1 and has been particularly useful in the low-pressure sewer systems with brighter pumps and whereas the original bioxide system was installed in 1996 and has exceeded its useful life, it is no longer economical to repair. And whereas Iroquois uh, Water Technologies has submitted a sole source quote in the amount of $19,000 for the replacement work. And whereas Michael O'Brien, Collection Systems Manager, has reviewed the quote and recommends accepting the quote which was submitted by Iroquois Water Technologies, now therefore be a result that the Town Board accepts the quote of Everclaw Water Technologies, 2650 Tallis Best Road, Sarasota, Florida, for the replacement and installation of a new bioxide system to treat the wastewater of Clinton Park Sewer District Number One for an amount not to exceed $19,000 to be paid from Clinton Park Sewer District Number One Sewer Contractual Bioxide, and be a further result that the comptroller is authorized to transfer up to $19,000 from Clinton Park Sewer District Number One sort contractual equipment to offset costs of the system. A resolution hiring additional seasonal golf course employees for the Barney Road Golf Course for the 2021 season, whereas the town board wishes to fill openings and staff for the 2021 golfing season at the Barney Road Golf Course. And whereas openings exist due to the resignation of Joe Martini, golf course supervisor at the Bar Barney Road Golf Course, and whereas Myra Kramer, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Affairs, has recommended that Jim Siani, currently hired as an attendant, be promoted to the position of golf course supervisor, and that Gary Payne be hired as an attendant for the golf course per the approved summer recreation matrix. Now, therefore, be resolved that authorization is hereby given to promote Jim Siani retroactive to May 2nd, 2021, and Gary Payne be hired. Um, for the Barney Road Golf Course, effective immediately through the remainder of the 2021 season to be paid as indicated on the attached Schedule A for the Barney Road Golf Course part-time employees. A resolution authorizing the Northland Newfoundland Club to use town trails for Northland's 2021 draft dog test on October 9th through the 10th, 2021, whereas the Northland Newfoundland Club, NMC, has requested the non-exclusive use of a portion of trails at Veterans Memorial Park in the Muni Paris Forest, as specified in the attached here to on October 9th and 10th, 2021, intermittently between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. for the purpose of dog draft dog tests. And whereas the Parks and Recreation Department has received an outdoor facility permit application and recommends allowing the use of the trails for this event. Now, therefore, be a result that the town board hereby authorizes the Northland Newfoundland Club to use a portion of Veterans Memorial Park and Mooney Curry's Forest Trails as specified in the attached year to October 9th and the 10th, 2021, for the purpose of holding draft dog tests and be a further result that this approval was expressly conditioned upon receipt prior to September 30th, 2021, in the Office of the Parks and Recreation of an appropriate proof of insurance subject to approval by the town attorney and be a further result that this approval is expressly conditioned upon the trails not being closed, but the members of the Northland Newfoundland Club are permitted and te to temporarily stop traffic at each end of the course in the event both a visitor and a race participant arrive at the same time and be a further result of the Director of Parks, Recreation and Community Affairs is authorized to sign the attached use of facilities agreement with the Northland Newfoundland Club. A resolution authorizing the installation of doors and locks in the New York State Police Barracks of the Public Safety Building. Whereas by resolution number 73 of 2021, the Town Board authorized the execution, execution of a memorandum of understanding 
was the New York State Police for the use and occupancy of portions of the public safety building and for certain upgrades and renovations to the police space at the building. And whereas the supervisor supervisor wishes to install doors and locks consistent with the memorandum of understanding and for New York State Police specifications in the New York State Police quarters at the public safety building. And whereas quotes were obtained for the doors and locks on March 29, 2021, whereas Daniel Clements, Director of Buildings, Parks and Recreation, recommends that Center for Security, 1659 Route 9, Clifton Park, New York, be authorized to supply and install the doors and locks for an amount not to exceed $7,300. $81. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the installation of the doors and locks for New York State Police specifications in the New York State Police barracks of the Public Safety Building is awarded to the Center for Security at a cost not to exceed $7,381 to be paid from general fund public safety building equipment and be it further resolved that the Comptroller is authorized to transfer the balance of the charges from general fund law enforcement other contractual to public safety building operations equipment. A resolution scheduling a public hearing on an application from 4, 451 Clifton Park Center Road, LLC for residential density bonus. Whereas pursuant to section 208.22.6 of the town code, base residential density for projects within town center is a maximum of 10 units per acre. And whereas the town board has authority to increase the allow, allowable density for residential housing within the town center zones under section 208 226E of the town code. And whereas on April 23rd, 2021, 451 Clifton Park Center Road, LLC applied for a bonus allowance for an additional two residential units in, a, in allowed residential density for a multifamily dwelling project at the 3.9 acre site at 451 Clifton Park Center Road within the TC2 zone. And whereas the proposal would allow for the conversion of previously planned amenity space within the existing footprint of the project under construction into two studio apartments for a total of 41 residential units approved for the project. And whereas the town board wishes to schedule a public hearing to hear comments on the proposal. Now therefore be it resolved that a public hearing is hereby scheduled for June 7th, 2021 at 7.07 p.m. at 6.00 Clifton Common Boulevard, Clifton Park, and the Senior Community Center on a proposal for a 41-unit residential density bonus for the multifamily dwelling project currently under construction at 451 Clifton Park Center Road to be a further result of the town purpose of publish a post and post notice thereof on the town's official signing board not less than 10 or more than 20 days before such public hearing notice. A resolution to authorize the town board to accept a donation from the Twin Bridges Rotary and Rotary District 7190 for the purchase and planting of a sugar, sugar maple tree. Whereas Eric Hamilton, Hamilton, a resident member of the Open Space Trails and Riverfront Committee, has facilitated the project, coordinated with the Rotary Clubs, the town staff. Now, therefore, be a result that the town board accepts a generous donation toward the purchase of a sugar maple tree to be planted at Garnsey Park to be a further result that the comptroller is authorized to increase revenue by $324 in general fund gift and donations, and that corresponding expenditures will also be increased by $324 in general fund Garnsey Park maintenance. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Any questions on the resolution? Uh, Teresa, if you could read the headings, please. Resolution number 109 of 2021, a resolution establishing an over an outside user fee for the Boston Lake Water District and authorize the supervisor to sign an outside user agreement for the Boston Lake Water District for property located at 1098 Boston Lake Road. So, by Mrs. Lott, second by Ms. Wallowit. Uh, this is a standard outside user agreement and this works very well for both parties. Uh, we've done many of these in the past for water, sewer. Um, as the, uh, the homeowner here will uh, be able to obtain public services and the district itself uh, gains another rate payer within that district. So it's, a, it's always a win-win situation in these circumstances. Anything uh, to add here, Tom? Anything? Uh, no, the ordinary. Uh, no, sure. just that, that, that this is the first one for that district, so the resolution mm -hmm. also establishes the outside user fee uh, by the board. Yep. Okay, good. 
All right. Discussion. Okay, Teresa. Councilwoman Flagg? Yes. Councilmember Riley? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowa? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 110 of 2021, a resolution to retain Prime AE Group of New York for professional engineering services related to the Riverview Landing Sewer District improvements. So Second. Well, by Ms. Morelli, second by Mrs. Flood. Uh, his, um, Prime has been working uh, directly with this system and this processing plant for uh, many years. Actually, it's the same engineering personnel for the most part, right, Mike? That's true. I mean, Doug and Jeff. So, um, as described at our last town board meeting, we are completing the seeker and bond resolution process which are two elements that are necessary for us to submit a viable and competitive grant application to new york state to hopefully attain funds to offset at least a portion of the expenses that are being faced by the people within this district due to the upgrades that are, nece that are necessary to the processing plant and again just to go over it again quickly there's couple of options. One is to upgrade the plant, which is basically a, a large septic system, uh, or uh, get, a, get away from the plant altogether and run a, uh, a line down Riverview Road and connect to the nearest sewer pipe. Uh, both options are very expensive. And we uh, did commit to uh, the residents last year at a public meeting that uh, we would do everything we could to secure uh, grant funding anywhere that it might be available. Uh, in, recent in my recent discussions with the DEC, uh, they said that uh, there were a couple of programs that uh, would be announcing that uh, monies would be available, and they thought these were programs where we would have a legitimate opportunity to, uh, to attain funds. Certainly nothing's guaranteed when you enter a grant uh, application process, but uh, we'll, we'll put our best foot forward and um, work with and continue to work with DEC on a resolution to this issue uh, at the least possible cost to the affected homeowners. Uh, anything you want to add here, Mike? Uh, just in general, um, you know, these uh, resolutions include the secret process. We establish the public hearing for the bond resolution process. I just want to emphasize again, as I did last week, that um, we're, we're going through this process now solely to submit a grant application. Uh, if we don't get the grant monies, um, we'll reassess the two options at that point. Uh, we're hoping that one of the options will be stronger than, than the other, and that would be to run the pipe down Riverview to the nearest sewer pipe, and then we'd be uh, just mothballing the, the, the processing plant, and therefore not including the Mohawk River in, in the future. Anything, uh, anything you want to add there, Mike? No. What, what why, don't you, why don't you come up to that? Part of the resolution just does uh, provide for a revision to be done to include the golf course. Yep. Uh, and I did speak to the owner of the golf course who is uh, um, looking forward to seeing the results of what the uh, possibilities are. Um, there's an interest, there's an interest in multiple properties, but he understands that if this is being done to the people of the Riverview Landing Treatment System and if the golf course part doesn't work out, he understands. Yeah, just to go over that again, uh, in my discussions with DEC, they did mention a couple of times that the golf course along Riverview Road also has a processing plant, and it, uh, it would be great if that could be eliminated as well. So it made sense, you know, when they when they mentioned something a couple of times, well, it's worth exploring. So uh, the priority is. Riverview Landing District and the, and the homeowners that within that district. However, if adding an entity like the golf course that has its own plant uh, would make our grant application stronger, 
then it's worthwhile to include them. If it will end up not making a difference, and uh, then we will exclude the golf course because we don't want to do anything that's going to negatively impact our priority, which is the Riverview Landing uh, District. So uh, thanks for making that contact, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it does yeah. uh, add to the to our score. Right. That'd be great. How many residents are in that district? I know it's small, but how many does it affect? Yeah, it's uh, 28, 30. There's 34 parcels. 34 parcels. So less than that yeah. for users. Uh, one of them is like four parcels in one. I think that's the fun yeah. rack. So. Yeah, tw I think 28 or 30 yeah. great payers. Yeah. So Very small. You yeah. start talking a million dollars, you know, for, for that amount of people, and uh, that's, that's an challenge. expensive proposition. Uh, and that kind of work is just exploding in cost uh, for many reasons. Uh, it involves environmental uh, regulations um, uh, and just, just the work that's required in general uh, to follow all of the current regulations uh, that become ever more stringent over time. Uh, we have upgraded that plant in the past, less than 20 years ago. Um, and uh, it was nowhere near that price. Yeah, so, Now you would expect some inflation over 16 years or so, but uh, but I think it's zoomed past uh, standard inflationary rates. So we're going to do whatever we can to help uh, in this attaining grant funds, if we can, is the first step to trying to uh, lower the cost for the uh, for the homeowners all right any um, so again that covers a couple of the uh, resolutions here that, that are in front of you tonight as it did at the last meeting specifically number two that we're considering now and number three okay all right any uh, discussion questions well I said last week we'll be discussing this item quite often and, uh, and then, so we certainly on the agenda this week and we'll be talking about it a lot in the next few months and probably longer. Present. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Waller? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 111 of 2020, a resolution in connection with the Town of Clifton Park accepting Lead agency status pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act regulations of 6 NYCRR Part 617. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Wallet, second by Mrs. Flood. Discussion. Okay. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallow? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 112 of 2021, a resolution accepting a quote from Stolen Excavating for the repair and replacement of a manhole on Southwood Drive. Second. Well, by Ms. Morelli, second by Mrs. Flood. Uh, Mike, uh, this is some uh, work that you need to do, replacement of a manhole prior to paving, right? Yes. Uh, we coordinated with the highway department earlier this year. We've been doing inspections on our system of the right. areas that they're going to pave, as well as some of their stuff. Um, the good news is, really, this is it. With everything else we can handle in house, we have uh, we have the technology to do some trenchless pipe patches. We can do that with our own stuff, and uh, we don't need to hire it out. But this one thing, there's one manhole that's a, it's a disaster. It's full of roots, and it, it's just compromised. Is that the first one going down the street? It is. Yeah. It's kind of on the shoulder, right on the yeah, curb line. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have it move too. Uh, because the base is big enough, we're going to have it just that cover is going to be put in the road instead of on the curb line. It's a terrible spot for it. Yeah. Um, but in reality, that's, we've done a great deal of all of Westchester, Lexington, Carriage, all down there in Crescent Ways. The, the, uh, I'm going to forget the roads. Eastwood, Southwood, Terrace. Yeah, Eastwood and Southwood are right there. Yeah, Western all together. that. Uh, Crown Point, Stonegate area. Yeah. Uh, no problems. Um, and it, uh, except for a few little things that we'll take care of in-house. But uh, nothing that can will impede paving or be a um, detriment to pave over. So this is it. Uh, we reached out to uh, our go-tos, uh, 
you know, Carver Construction was one, Tom Cabricki is another one. Um, Mike Colin, small operator, but uh, he has a niche in this this market. He's small, he's owner operated, and he, they just can't beat him. You know, these big companies come in and they, they try. But I reached out to some smaller guys who either don't want to do it or they're too busy. It's yeah. high right. times in the construction business right now. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. I want to commend you and your team uh, every year working hard to uh, televise the lines uh, under the road before we bathe. And then uh, if there are any lines that need, uh, need to be fixed, they get fixed. Uh, in this case, uh, there's a manhole yeah. on, this, on this street that needs to be fixed. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, an important service that you provide, uh, giving us a um, direct view of the condition of the pipes under the road last thing we want to do is pave and then have an issue where we're cutting the road soon thereafter. So we do whatever we can, the best we can, to uh, avoid that situation. So uh, I want to get, again commend you and, and your team for all the work that you, you do along those lines each year. If you look at the quotes, it seems like you got a really good price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the owner-operator, one guy, he does it himself. I mean, it, he just takes the prevailing wage, you know, crew out of the out of the mix. It's really hard to beat for these big companies. And we, we reach out to the small-time guys who just don't. Some guys don't want to go that big, and other guys are just too busy. Yeah, the uh, a single operator, uh, or even I guess he has one guy. One guy, him, perhaps. Yeah. Um, uh, they have a definitive advantage on the prevailing wage side of things. Time. Yeah. All right, very good. Any questions for Mike? All right, Teresa. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowit? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 113 of 2021, a resolution accepting a quote from Evolva Water Technologies. Am I saying Evolva. What? Evolva. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were right there. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. 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 For an existing biopsy. I'll give you a pass on that. I'll look at the park as a steward district number one. <laughs> yes, Mr. Avokwa, what do you have right. for us? Um, okay, so this uh, this system, we inherited this. So this was put in long before the town took over the CK sanitary system. Apparently, the, well, grinder pumps. In general, especially on a large scale like we have, generate a great deal of hydrogen sulfide. As the town board is aware, we have done multiple projects repairing lines that are directly affected from force main entry. So places where pump stations discharge, Hardell Rio is a perfect example. Kingswood uh, or Evergreen Estates all dumps into there, and that just eats these pipes up. And uh, apparently, they had a big issue back in the in the uh, early 90s on Twilight Drive. They lost Twilight Drive. It collapsed. Um, so they, they reached out to, at the time, U.S. Filter, and um, uh, the, the product was out by oxide. And, and to my knowledge, it's still owned by, well, U.S. Filter with its subsidiary now, Evoqua. And there really isn't an alternative. I called the county. They're still using it. They have something else that's out there for odor control, but it's a mist that they spray in their pump stations, and that is not where we're at. We're trying to we're trying to keep the ball rolling on this hydrogen sulfide control to eliminate damage to downstream systems. One of the benefits of that is it does knock down some of the odor, but really we're just trying to uh, eliminate this corrosive gas or keep it at a, at a, at a level that won't be detrimental to the, to the systems downstream. Unfortunately, and fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we have limped along with this plastic tank sitting in this property over on Rolling Brook Drive for years, and they have just filled it. I mean, the electrical was terrible, the tank was old, and they filled it and filled it and filled it. Well, recently, they just came to us and said, we're, we're, we can't fill this tank anymore. The liability is getting too huge, you know, and if you're going to change the tank, the electrical has got to be changed. It's dangerous for our drivers, what have you. So I work, I've been working with a salesman for a couple of years on this, believe it or not. Uh, the city keeps throwing numbers at me that are just ridiculous, and to buy, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, and it's it's a it's a system that we have, we operate, we know what it's for, but it's the only place we have it. So it's really hard to embrace it and love it. And uh, 
you know, finally we came to an agreement, a two-year term, to upgrade the tank. They're going to own it, so they're putting all their system in. We will upgrade the electricity, which is simple. We can have an electrician out there to clean it up. Um, uh, Refence it as part of this project, which will help the neighbors who live right there. You have to understand where this tank is. It is in the front yards of people's houses. It's been there. One person built a house within the front yard. Buyer beware, but you know, over the years we've always tried to work with these people to to make it better. Without, you know, we're not moving the system at our dime because you built your house here. So well, it was uh, it was there when the first. House uh, in that area was. Oh great. yeah, I mean, oh yeah. It's, it's right in somebody's yard. But yeah. It was built with the house. It wasn't something where the town or CK Sanitary, before we owned the system, came in and just plopped this on somebody's no, this property. Part, right. I mean, so yeah, it's always been there. And then the, I guess it, it was sold not long ago. So the new buyer, right. you know, it's, it's nothing you can miss. That's for sure. Correct. So this is an opportunity. Uh, we, we went out to bid for a fence last year to put around it when this new tank that we're hoping to get gets delivered, and we're so far out of fencing. So everything is just, you know, delayed, delayed, delayed. But ultimately, we're going to end up with this a system that we're renting. We're still paying, I believe, the same amount, or maybe to 10 cents more, I think, a gallon, which it goes up every year. Um, and uh, we're going to do it for two years. And during that time, I am committed to finding a possible alternative, um, something maybe less expensive. I've, I've hit the county up a few times. There used to be something out there, believe it or not, it was called VX. I'm not making that up. That's like a chemical weapon or something. Like somebody <laughs> in, in the business made this stuff. But I, I don't think it's out there anymore. Um, so we may be stuck with dioxide. But I'm too afraid to shut the system down because we do have AC pipe down the line. Uh, uh, Twilight was replaced, it's plastic, but uh, cider mill, apple tree, all that down there is still AC. And you go over to Woodbine and Glencliff, or uh, Glen, Glenbrook. AC is concrete. Yes. So yeah. what, what Mike is, is talking about is the gas that's created within the system. Uh, it's been shown that it eats away at these concrete pipes. Um, and that's why when he mentions plastic, well, it doesn't eat plastic. Right. And uh, when they fix Twilight, at least they put in plastic there. But there's still this concrete pipe within the system, and uh, quite a bit of it. Side note, it's, it's, it's lethal. Hydrogen sulfide will kill you in a second. So for us, it's also beneficial on the safety, safety level. I mean, yeah. We have meters, we test, we can find space. But if there's a place where somebody's going to get hurt, it's in that those discharge points so are definitely our highest concentration. So keeping it at, at bay, especially coming into the summer months, is what this what this product does. So not much has changed. We've been taking deliveries up until the, the tank was taken out of service, uh, but we're waiting for the new tank, and that's what this is all about. Now. Yeah, Mike had talked to me about doing something for the, the residents that live there. Again, like he said, it was there when they bought the house, but uh, if, we, if we're looking at something new or, or in this case upgrading the system that's there, uh, it would be a good time to also have a new fence placed around it, make it a little more palatable from an aesthetic point of view. So that, that that's the reasoning for the fence. We try to be good neighbors. If you've seen the Woodstead pump station, Home stations that are in people's yards, we do our providers. We try to make them really nice the best we can. So yeah, and you, see, you see those throughout yeah. certain neighborhoods. You yeah. know, you'll suddenly see a system that's on the front yard and it's been there since the house was built. Um, do the best we can to hide it a little bit, right? <laughs> best we can. Yeah. So all right, good. Well, we we've owned that system for uh, what 15 years now, I guess 16 years. Uh, Time flies. Yeah, we're going almost on 20 years. Yeah. 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 Uh, any um, any questions for Mark? All right, Teresa. Councilwoman Flood. Yes. Councilman Morelli. Yes. Councilwoman Wallowitz. Yes. Supervisor Barrett. Yes. Resolution number 114 of 2021, a resolution hiring additional seasonal golf course employees for the Bar Barney Road Golf Course for the 2021 season. So moved. Second. 
Moved by Ms. Wallwood, second by Mrs. Flood. Myla? I'm excited to say that we will be fully staffed um, after um, Gary King is hired. Uh, Jim Siani has been with us for a number of years and he has stepped up since uh, Joan decided not to return this year uh, with training people, um, collecting timesheets, doing scheduling. And so um, I spoke to him. Basically what he was doing was what Joan would have done. Um, so I definitely recommend him to, to fill that spot. And uh, then we'll be fully staffed there. Very good. And uh, business has been uh, very good at the course. We had a good year last year, so um, hopefully that continues. Uh, it's still a you know, wonderful value and a place uh, where you can walk the course in about an hour and a half and uh, have some fun. So uh, come on out to the Barney Road Golf Club. Just to, sorry, sorry, just to piggyback on that, Supervisor, yeah. I was out by the course on Saturday. It looks great, so kudos to you, Myla, and Dan, to your folks as well. Of course, it really looks good. And if we get a few days of sun, <laughs> and maybe some temps above 70, 65 even, it'll really look nice. Yeah, we'll really green up. Hey, uh, did, did we fix the fence yet along the... They haven't got there yet, but uh, there yeah, it's uh, all been approved, and it's in the works, we will uh, give them to uh, Mariahville Fence, tough job, so it's on their schedule. I imagine they're waiting on materials like everybody else. Yeah, we had a, over the winter, the, there was some fencing that was uh, just destroyed. Um, as as you're approaching the entrance gate to the uh, to the golf course, and it was, it was laying down there for a while as we were coming out of winter, once all the snow melted, and uh, asked Dan, the guys, to uh, to go down there and at least prop it up as they could, and uh, we need to get it replaced uh, as soon as possible. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not a small job, especially in that area. It's a yeah, tough bit. area to get into. All right. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowick? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Backing up for housekeeping to resolution of a 113. Can I have someone introduce that and second it? Wait a minute. Someone? Which second. number? You said 113, but what number, what number time? Uh, number five. The second. last one. Second. Okay, thanks. We went right into my yeah, second. Introduce it or second. Oh. That's all. Resolution number 115 of 2021. A resolution authorizing the Northland New Glenland Club to the to use the town trails for Northland's 2021 draft dog tests on October 9th and 10th, 2021. Someone? Second. Well, by Mrs. Flood, second by Mr. Morelli, and uh, you know we, we have some really good um, relationships, partnerships with uh, outside groups uh, to utilize various park areas in town. I think it's a great compliment to uh, how uh, attractive and inviting our parks are and how our park system has expanded exponentially. Uh, and uh, there's so many new opportunities uh, for people to use the parks and I think they're discovering that, whether again it's for their own enjoyment or as a, as a structured group. Uh, we just had a uh, just recently approved a, an agreement with the Shen Nordic Club, for instance, which uh, is a terrific partnership. And uh, this is another interesting, uh, another interesting event. So, uh, draft dog tests. I've never seen that in person, but I'm sure it's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd like to see it. I yeah. To see it too. Yeah, it sounds I'm pretty cool. Go. <laughs> <laughs> we can go. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, any questions on this one? Okay. Teresa. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowit? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Have we, uh, Myla, have we had any other um, requests uh, 
from uh, businesses to use common recently? Uh, I know I sent you one. Uh, yes, no, um, nothing new. No? no? Past oh, okay. Yeah, um, a lot of the use for the stage, a lot of that's being finalized, and I'm working with Dan um, on that because they're now asking about using sound equipment and the lights. Um, but as far as like businesses with the, uh, I think we have two over, we have one at uh, Collins Park, one at Veterans, mm. um, as far as um, like adult exercise programs yeah. that are running. Is there one at the Common too, on the stage? Or? Um, not that we have, but the senior center is using the stage. Right, yeah, yeah, the, uh, so a couple of their dance classes have been using the stage right. for a while, yeah. They used it last fall too. And yeah, it worked out great. And now we have these other outside groups, dance groups, that are utilizing the stage, which is fantastic. Yeah. All right, very good. So I'm just curious. All right, Teresa. Resolution number 116 of 2021, a resolution authorizing the installation of doors and locks in the New York State Police Barracks of the Public Safety Building. So Second. Well, by Mrs. Flood, second by Mr. Morelli, as part of our uh, new MOU with uh, the New York State Police. Uh, one of the, uh, there were several town responsibilities as part of that. Uh, I know they're moving there. I was talking to the uh, senior investigator and they were preparing to move furniture and, and uh, getting ready for the uh, new flooring. Uh, the, the painting inside is done. Dan uh, ordered the paint, and the troopers supplied the uh, uh, the workers to get that done. So that's so that's done. Now the we were ready to move forward with the the new doors and locks. Uh, I don't know, month or, month or so. Yeah, ago. month month. Ago. Uh, they asked us to put a uh, put a hold on it. Uh, they they had some other uh, parts of the their systems. Um, that they're working on. They didn't want us to move forward yet, but now I think they're ready, right? That's correct, yeah. And nothing's changed with the specs they originally gave us, that's, right? That's true also, yeah. This is the same uh, lock that they called out, the Simplex 8148. Uh, everything else that they had, some different thoughts, nothing was able to be approved from their division captain, any of their ideas that they had at the station. So they fell back to the same system that they had asked for originally, and this included we had to change the doors because this particular lock set does not work on the doors that are there. It's a mortise lock, so you had to change the doors and the frames. So that's what this resolution is including. Doors, three doors, frames, and the simplex lock that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep, and again, that was part of the MOU. So uh, now that they're ready for us to move forward, we'll get those ordered. Uh, what's the uh, time frame, Dan? Uh, well, once we get these in, I think you're only really talking a couple of weeks to get these in. They've been working on it to kind of have it all in the back of their head. They've been working with Center for Security back and forth for a while. So it should be pretty quick. They did start doing the carpets this morning over there. So they have some of the offices already done with that. So they were moving their furniture around and they'll be getting into the final tile next. Um, the transaction window of the, the tempered glass, that's going to be in a week from today. And then they're going to install it probably Wednesday after that. Mm -hmm. So then these doors should be final right afterwards and probably a little touch up paint in there and everything that um, we've talked about, all these projects will be wrapped up. Okay. Well, that's good. It's good for, I uh, wanted to follow through on our commitment uh, as part of the MOU as quickly as possible. So good job. Thank you. And uh, thank you for keeping that moving. Sorry. All right. Any questions for Dan? No, it's important that we just continue to support the State police and get this done. Thanks. Council on Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Council Councilman Yes. Resolution number 117 of 2021, a resolution scheduling a public hearing on an application from 451 Clifton Park Center Road, LLC, for residential density bonus. Moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Wallowitz. Second by Mrs. Flood. Uh, Tom, uh, can you give us a uh, brief rundown on the request and the process? I, yes, this is a um, <clears throat> uh, the second uh, 
application, I believe, for a density bonus increase that we um, entertained. Uh, this is a much smaller one. This is the existing building under construction just west of uh, Clifton Country Road on Clifton Park Center Road. Uh, a building was designed with two um, spaces there that they didn't have uh, an identified use for, and I'll let the applicant kind of describe that at the public hearing, but he wishes to, they wish to uh, convert those two spaces into small studio apartments. The building, as you can see, is, is uh, the footprint is there. It, it's up, it's just now internal uh, design, so the, the application won't affect um, you know, the build out or the footprint at all, uh, uh, or the capacity for sewer water, things like that. Uh, but under our town center TC2 zone, uh, the, the, the property had originally about 3.9 acres. So with 10 units per uh, acre, it was uh, approved at 39 uh, units. This application asks for uh, the two studios to be added to that. So it's an add of only two, but it's the same process that uh, we uh, amended, that the board amended, uh, I believe in 2019, or maybe even just last year, to allow for the density increases in town center. Um, so it is a local law that they're asking for, um, and it uh, does require a public hearing. Uh, but after that, it's got a pretty flexible uh, mechanism for you to add it if you choose to do so. But so we've also declined as well. Oh, yeah, we're in that, in that yeah. forward, yeah. Um, so in this particular case, the um, the size of the building is not affected. Right. It's the same size. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, so this uh, resolution will set a public hearing. Uh, we'll get more details at the hearing. Uh, but that that is the basic overview of what the request is. And uh, we'll talk more about it on that evening. And that's um, June seventh. June seventh. It's on the seventh at the senior center, right? Yeah. Yep. That's Why is it seven oh seven? Well, we have three uh, hearings that night. Oh. Yeah. So. I uh, yeah. 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 And we usually just schedule, and you can't begin a public hearing until uh, the time set before. So I, I just sort of stagger them a little bit if there's more than one. And what are the other two? Uh, the other, the first one that's already been scheduled is uh, the project that you and Mike were talking about earlier mm. for the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, and there is one that uh, I believe is going to be on next week's agenda for some park improvements at Riverview Park District. Right. So it will also be a bonding process. So to to be process and uh, seeker and and uh, ultimately a bond resolution. Okay. So we'll have three uh, public hearings that night. One will be in reference to Riverview Landing. Second one will be uh, in reference to park improvements and uh, this item. So uh, we'll have uh, three public hearings that evening. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Teresa? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Bollowood? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 118 of 2021, a resolution to authorize the town board to accept a donation from the Twin Bridges Rotary and Rotary District 7190 for the purchase and planting of a sugar maple tree. Solved. Thank you. Moved by Mrs. Flood, second by Ms. Wallowit. And I want to thank Eric Hamilton uh, for, uh, for this generous donation. Uh, he, uh, the Hamiltons uh, are very involved with the uh, Interact Club, which is uh, a terrific community uh, organization that works with uh, students in our community. They received uh, a several hundred dollar donation from our Community Action Fund uh, to uh, plant several trees uh, at Garnsey Park. Uh, Eric uh, and, uh, and his group wanted to uh, plant another. So uh, they decided to make that donation, and that'll lead to uh, one more tree being planted in that area. So 
I want to thank uh, the Hamiltons and, uh, and the Inter Interact Club for uh, this nice project. Anything you want to add there, Dan? Is there anything? When will it be finished? Uh, I'm not sure exactly when. Um, I think we have to order it and uh, get it in. So it might be might be a couple of weeks, I would say, at this point. I'm not sure what their plan is exactly. Uh, I still have to meet with them up there for the exact location. But can I say to you, it's fine. Good. All right. Councilman Yes. Councilman Maroney? Yes. Councilwoman Waller? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. And I was down at the transfer station Saturday, and the uh, donations for the Community Action Fund uh, at our two, two locations at the transfer station near the uh, recycling area uh, continue to come in fast and furious. I know the company's doing a good job keeping up with the, the amount of donations, but Saturday it was overflowing. And I know we usually receive a lot of donations on Saturday, so uh, if you just make sure that they do get there tomorrow. And I was there this morning and it's empty. Oh, good, good. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. and it, it, the only bad thing that we get down there, if they if they sit there for any length of time, uh, it has a tendency to attract bees and wasps. So for not only uh, to keep the area clean and aesthetically pleasing, it's also a little bit of a safety issue. So we have to uh, make sure that that area is cleaned up on a regular basis. They've done a great job since they've started that I've seen. Very good. They come twice a week still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, any other? Oh, well, first we'll go to, uh, no, any other business that come before the board this evening? Okay. Uh, we'll go to public privilege. If you'd like to speak on a town matter, please raise your hand. We'll ask that you come forward. State your name and address for the record, and please keep it to five minutes or less. John, could you? Uh, good. Thank all you. right. Very good, sir. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second by Mr. Morelli. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Mahler? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Thank you.